Believe it or not, this is a sheet cake that I turned into a stack of laundry. And things are not always what they seem, so check it out. Okay, so in this video, I am going to give you a lot of tips and show you how I made this cake, but it's not quite a tutorial, but it is going to give you a good idea of how I make and how I approach these types of cakes. So the first thing I focus on is my board. I personally think it adds a lot when you have a custom made board that's also made out of the same material as the rest of the cake is. So this one is going to look like a wooden board and I personally choose to use my sculpting tools to add texture and make the wood grain. There are some impression mats out there which you could use if you don't feel like putting all this work into it, but I enjoy doing this and I think it looks a lot better because you can manipulate the fondant however you see fit and I always like to pay more attention to the part that's going to be the front. Then I mixed a few shades of brown and I painted the part that's going to be seen. See why I didn't paint the middle? Because the cake's gonna go on it. And now the scariest part of the whole thing is flipping this cake over. Whew. All right, and this time you can see I chose to do a rectangular cake. So all of the design and the sculpting is going to be on the outside, which is going to be modeling chocolate. I rolled out a thin piece and yes, it looks like it's not enough to cover the whole cake, but this time I'm not freaking out because it's on purpose. I am going to have three t-shirts, one on top of the other. So this one is just the top shirt. The reason why I chose to use modeling chocolate is because it doesn't dry, so it won't crack. It remains pliable and workable for a long time. This time I am using the top of a fondant tub to give the shape of the neck. And with my sculpting tools, I am going to make indentations and I am also going to add extra pieces of modeling chocolate wherever they are needed like right here for the neck. The good thing about modeling chocolate is that you don't need glue either because it just kind of blends into each other if you just press on it hard enough. Now the sides, it takes quite some pressure to get these folds in. This is so fun to work with. And see, I am adding more pieces of chocolate wherever I see fit. And I am using my big ball tool to add the wrinkles and smooth out the, piece, the added pieces of chocolate. I also use my finger to smooth out the chocolate so that there are no marks left. Okay, for the neck, I cut out a piece of modeling chocolate shaped like a ribbon and I gave it some texture with my X-Acto blade. And because it's chocolate, I don't need glue. So I am just going to work it into the other parts and give the illusion that it's a neck of a t-shirt. All right, now to the other t-shirts. I am going to make the bottom one first in white and then I'm gonna cover the middle part with a red ribbon of modeling chocolate. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did to the top one, press really, really hard with my sculpting tools and give the illusion of a fold. And now my favorite part, the painting part. I use... Sorry, I should say that. It's awesome. That was awesome. Well, thanks for not interrupting me. Okay, now the, my favorite part is painting it. I like freehanding these, but you could also just kind of trace them. And I am using white paint to make the Corvette logo on this t-shirt. Um, you can see some smudges there where I made a mistake, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just gonna kind of smudge them out with my X-Acto blade and then blend and then smooth out the chocolate with my fingers. 
and it's going to be okay. And now the letters. I always approach letters as the signs. You can't think of them in, as letters that need to go in, in logical order because then it's not as easy to paint. So if you think of them as the signs, then it doesn't matter if you're going backwards or forward, it will turn out well. Okay, and here is another creative way of getting the happy birthday message on. I used it as the label on the back of the t-shirt. Painting on black, it's really hard to get brighter colors, but it's okay because it's a t-shirt, so it's probably just faded from getting washed a lot. And as you can see, it looks like a stack of t-shirts folded. my realistic pile of clothes. So um, I actually have so much fun making these realistic cakes. They are, I mean, time just flies by. They are, to me, not the hardest ones to make because they are so imperfect that you can just, well, I can just do it and I love doing it. So here's the thing. If any of you guys want to challenge me to make a realistic or a hyper realistic cake, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can do it. We can all see if I can do it. So for today, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, share my video, subscribe to my channel, hit that thumbs up. All of that really helps me out and I appreciate it if you do it. So thank you so much again for watching. I will see you guys again next week. And for now, bye bye.